Hello, I'm Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Spitfire Mark V's Gunsight Mark II installation. I'll give you extracts from wartime Air Ministry manuals and show you my relevant reworked colour AP diagrams. I hope you find this interesting. The Reflector Gunsight Mark II was developed and manufactured by Barr and Stroud and the site entered service in 1938, being fitted to Gloucester Gladiator fighters. The site was originally known as the GM-2 and became the standard fixed gun site used by the Royal Air Force. It became known as the Reflector Site Mark II and was fitted to British fighters from 1938 until 1943. The object of gun sights is to show the pilot in which direction to aim the guns so that the bullets will hit the target. In fighter aircraft, such as the Spitfire Mark V, the sight is classed as a fixed gun sight. For multi-gun fighter installations, the whole process of adjusting the directions of the gun barrels so that the bullet groups of all the guns form the required bullet pattern at any range and of adjusting the gun sight to allow for gravity drop, is called harmonisation. When the process is complete, the guns and sight are said to be harmonised at that range. Since the enemy aircraft will change its position during the time of flight of the bullets, it is plain that, except when the attack is delivered from directly ahead, or from dead astern of the enemy, the guns must not be aimed directly at the target and that the correct point of aim is that point on the enemy's flight path at which the enemy and the bullets will arrive simultaneously. The angle between the sighting line and the line of aim is called the deflection angle. The projector Type 1 Mark 1 is a standard non-computing gun sight for daylight use. Its chief difference from the other Type 1 projectors is that it incorporates a range estimating mechanism. The purpose of this is to help the pilot to decide when the target is within effective range. We shall look at the range estimating mechanism later. Type 1 projectors consist of the following basic components. A diffused monochromatic light source consisting of a frosted filament lamp a graticle consisting of a transparent ring and bead pattern on an opaque ground, a lens system, a three-way positive lock plug connected to the sight by a trisal cable, a socket and a dimming switch. The gun sight graticle is illuminated by the light source and fixed just within the focal distance of the lens system. The lens system thus forms a virtual image of the gratical pattern. The position of the gratical is adjusted relative to the lens system, so that this image is focused at infinity, thus ensuring that the gratical remains fixed in relation to the target when the eye is moved across the optical field in either the lateral or vertical planes. This process of adjusting the position of the gratical is called focusing the sight. The projector's basic components are contained within a cast light alloy body. The upper part of this carries a flange to which the reflector can be attached by four small screws. The lower end carries a detachable lamp holder. The three-way plug is attached to this by the trisal cable. The centre part of the body is spherical and fits into the corresponding socket on the aircraft, providing an adjustable joint for harmonisation. The lamp for the projector is of the gas-filled tungsten filament type. As a large diffused light source is necessary for even illumination of the wide field, the spherical bulb is frosted on the emergent side and silvered on the opposite side. Three spare lamp bulbs for the site are stowed in holders on the starboard side of the cockpit. 
The day filament comprises of two 9 watt filaments in parallel. This arrangement, giving more even illumination and being more robust than a single 18 watt filament. Should one filament fail, the other will continue to give some light until an opportunity occurs to change the lamp. The plug and socket have been specially produced for Type 1 projectors. The plug is locked in position by a flange ring which screws onto the socket. The cable being reinforced by a rubber gland at entry. A standard length of 2 foot 9 inch trisal cable is provided. Here's the Spitfire Fires wiring diagram showing the method of connecting sight and dimmer switch to the main circuit. The electrical supply is taken through the dimmer switch to a three-way terminal block and then to the socket. The negative lead runs to the common pole of the lamp, the positive lead being switched. The dimmer switch is of a special pattern and is made for two voltages, 12 and 24. It consists of a plastic moulding containing a former on which is wound a variable resistance. The 24 volt dimmer switch contains in addition a fixed resistance. A detachable cover carries a contact arm fitted into the contact knob. A detachable base plate seals the three connecting terminals and provides for attachment by three screws to the instrument panel as shown here. The switch has three positions, the clockwise sequence being off, night and day. The night position extends over the dimming range of the low wattage filament only, while the day position provides for the full illumination of the 18 watt filament only. The projector's lens system consists of four lenses as follows. Two double convex lenses, a double concave lens, and a convex concave lens. The lenses are mounted in the sight body in this diagram and are secured in position by bezel rings. Resilient packing rings are fitted below each lens. The lens system is desiccated, sealed and tested for porosity during manufacture to prevent the ingress of moisture. The projector Type 1 Mark 1 is intended for day use and incorporates a range estimating mechanism. The purpose of this is to help the pilot to decide when the target is within effective range. The gratical ring is provided with horizontal and vertical translucent bars. The horizontal bars, called range bars, extend nearly to the bead and can be adjusted to produce a gap on each side of the bead. The width of the gap is controlled by a component known as the base range image, operated by two heads, known as the range and base heads respectively. The base range image consists of a propeller shaped mask etched onto a light orange filter. The mask is opaque and the background translucent. This image is situated immediately below the concave plane lens carrying the graticle. The range and base heads consist of two notched rings encircling the sight body immediately below the spherical portion. They can be rotated by the pilot which cause the mask to increase or decrease the gap between the range bars on the gratical. Owing to the shape of this mask, the range bars appear chisel pointed. The scales are calibrated to measure points on the chisel ends. The heads are supported by a threaded securing ring, which is screwed onto the sight body below the heads. They move over scales marked range and base respectively. The range scale is engraved on the body and the base scale ring fitting over the securing ring and fixed in position by three screws. The range scale is graduated in steps of 100 yards and the base scale in steps of 20 feet. 
The latter represents the apparent wingspan of a target aircraft. Increase of range reduces the gap between the range bars and increase of base enlarges it. The gun sight reflectors may be used with the projectors in a number of combinations. Here we are looking at the reflector Type 1 Mark II in use with the projector Type 1 Mark I. The Type 1 Reflector Mark II in conjunction with Type 1 projector are used for sighting fixed gun installations such as the Spitfire Mark V. The projector produces an illuminated ring and bead graphical pattern the purpose of which is to help the pilot to aim his guns. The pattern is reflected by the reflector and the pilot looks through the reflector at the target and sees the pattern superimposed on the target enemy aircraft. The reflector is held in a reflector carrier which is attached to a flange on the projector body. The reflector glass is mounted in the reflector carrier at an angle of 45 degrees to the optical axis of the sight and is not movable. It is attached to the reflector carrier by a reflector with packing strips on each side of the glass. The reflector glass consists of polished glass that is optically flat. Reflection occurs at both surfaces of the glass, but this does not cause perceptible double image since the reflections seen are those of a vertical image formed by the projector at infinity and a displacement of a small fraction of an inch is imperceptible. A rubber crash pad is attached to the front of the reflector carrier by a wire clip passing through the rubber and two retaining pins which pass through the projecting lugs on the carrier and through the ends of the clip. These pins are held in position by retaining rings. Some earlier models of the Type 1 Mark I reflector differed from the square glass later type in that the reflector glass is oval in shape as shown here. They had a provision for the fitting of a dimming screen. This is a circular piece of optically flat neutral tinted triplex glass mounted in a screen holder which fits over the screen pivot. The screen can be set in any of three positions, vertical and to either side. The Spitfire 5 was fitted with a sliding dimming screen as shown here. It consists of a smoke tinted panel sliding in felt lined runners below the windscreen. The runners are attached to the reflector sight mounting at the top of the instrument panel and the screen is fitted with a lifting rod and ring by means of which it can be lifted parallel to the windscreen. A spring-loaded ball catch secures the screen in the up position. Well that's it for this video. I do hope you found this interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing and also ring the bell. Remember it's free and you'll get notifications when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.